I'm going to talk to you about reducing methane and other volatiles coming into the air and the environmental implications of this, and from the point of view of the energy management of these emissions. We all know that a landfill is a biochemical reactor. It has water, air, and solid urban waste. Obviously, it's a chemical reactor. It's going to create a series of products, which are the leachates and biogas. They're like methane and sodium dioxide and other gases. These emissions have to be controlled. Obviously, we, we have a permeability system. You'll know more about this than I do. But no system is perfect. So there are always non-controlled emissions, both with regard to leachate and biogas, that get into the, the environment. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. This is a royal decree that came out in 2001 that talks about eliminating um, these waste. And we've looked at Annex 3, um, point 3, and the emission of potential emissions of gas. What I was struck by in the official State Gazette that they say that the, this is an, a source of oxygen because there's no chemical compound that's known as etc. So very often those official <laughs> State Gazette is full of load of rubbish. So, one thing about the legislation, we need to control the emissions, and I understand emissions as uh, exhaust gases that get out of there into the air. Into the air, I can't understand it in any other way. In late, this can be done when it's in operation. It has to be done monthly, and then in later maintenance phase. That's what the law says. In order to understand this, I've got this scheme with the biogas extraction systems. This is what I call the controlled emissions of biogas in a landfill. But as we all know, nothing is perfect. So we could get non-controlled emissions or biogas that escapes into the atmosphere. So. How can we measure these emissions? Um, I started studying this because I come from volcanoes, and this looks easier than volcanoes. Because of the accumulation chambers, you can see you can't, you, know, you can do hundreds and thousands of measurements, of flow measurements very quickly, and you can do 80,000 of these a day. So if you cover a landfill, you can estimate the emissions that are going to come out of it. It might look complex, but we can do all of it. Here we have somebody measuring the uh, carbon dioxide that's emitted. And this is measuring methane, because it must be quite difficult, because you take an aliquot of a closed system in the accumulation chamber to give us the concentrations of methane, and then we, the, the CO2 flow and the mass relationship, we can get each measuring point we can measure the methanes that are, that's emitted. Here we have an example of methane emission from Arico landfill. This was done back in 2007 in the old cell. Emissions of CO2 into the atmosphere of 8.7 tons a day. But we're more interested in methane, which is about 0.4 ton a day. Another example, we can see the emissions of methane in Arico in 2008, which are about seven or eight tons a day, very similar to the previous year. There's, the black spots are where we measure, that take the measurements, and for methane, it's the same. This takes, led us to assess and quantify in these two campaigns the uncontrolled emission of CO2, which is about 3,100 tons a year, and we extrapolate these values, and 73 tons a year of methane. It, it, the first thing we can see, we can see that the CO2 and the, or the landfill gases is about 0 0.6, 0 0.5, the molar ratio of landfill gases, that is. But what we're surprised about, the ratio is the, the, the uncontrolled emissions are far greater because of microbiome and methane oxidation in the soil cover. So one way to reduce the emissions of methane into the atmosphere 
is to cover it microbial oxidation, which usually happens in the cover. Apart from quantifying the uncontrolled emissions, can be used as a useful tools to assess the efficiency of the collection, the biogas collection and extraction systems. If I know how much biogas is in the system, but I also know how much gets away uncontrolled, then it's simple to work out will give us the efficiency in both cases. In Arrico, we say that the extraction of biogas or the calculations that we do in these two campaigns, we're talking about about 70% is uncontrolled, so we don't have a capacity of saying whether it's good or not. But that's the information. I'd also like to highlight that if we compare the uncontrolled with the controlled emissions, we can immediately say that the controlled emissions is far higher and the non-controlled emissions is still fairly significant. If you look at the register uh, of emissions in Spain, we can get data for the last 10 or 15 years of from the landfills that have to provide an emission rate. So if we take a period of 10 years, we can say that the five landfills in the Canary Islands were, according to the, the data, are responsible for 10.3 and 14.9 kilotons per year. 10.3 and 14.9 sounds better because 10.3 comes from a period of time when there weren't, so there wasn't so much information. And this I'm talking about the Arico landfill and Salto del Negro in Gran Canaria. But after a lot of studies conducted by me, we can extrapolate the real emission figures into the atmosphere of these biogas, and it's almost half of the official figures. It's not between 10.3 and 14.9. You can take the official date, data. It's between 7.5 and 5.2, in fact. Here we have the time, uh, temporal evolution of the non-control or fugitive emissions of methane and CO2 from a recall landfill. And as we can see, it's not very high. It, the um, fugitive emissions, and this has fallen off drastically, but this means there's still some fugitive emissions. One information I'd like to compare is that 2002, when the landfill was at the end of its life, and according to our data, the emission rate is about 2,000 tons, and according to the official data, it's about 7,000. So the emissions of methane into the air in the total emissions register, the official data, are overvalued. They're not undervalued. Then if we look, but they don't just issue methanes, but also volatile organic compounds. This is a study that we did in Arica in 2004-2005, or even in the landfill that we have here next to in La Saleto. So we're talking about a standardized emission rate of around 241 or 779 kilograms a day per square kilometers per landfill. In the case of Acevedo, it's 15. So, conclusions. The fugitive emissions that are uncontrolled of methane into the air by, are significant from landfills, but are, are they these are the ones that really go into the atmosphere. In my opinion, in the, the official register of emissions, the, the methane production is higher in according to their figures. According to our studies, that is. Obviously, the implications of this for in energy and for engineering, the fugitive emissions, and I don't think they're so, there aren't many, many people where they do this, but this could be a useful tool for assessing the uh, efficiency of methane extraction from the landfill. Thank you very much.